welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to film this video and it honestly baffles me that this is the first time I'm making a video like this because books and reading in general has always just been such a big part of my life, but I'm excited to start doing this. I'm hoping to make this like a recurring series on my channel where I talk about the books that I've read in the previous month and my thoughts on them. But to kick it off today, I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in quarantine slash lockdown so far. So I have a list of 15 books that I'm going to talk about and there are some really good ones in here, some maybe like not as great, but we're going to get into it. It's going to be great. And please, please comment down below your favorite book or any book that you would want to recommend to me. And feel free to follow me on Goodreads if you would like. That's kind of where I update my reading list, my want to read list, etc, etc. So do that if you want, but let's just jump into it. Also a side note, I do not have any of the physical copies of these books because I either read it on my Kindle or I borrowed it from my cousin Lacey who is also a booktuber slash bookstagrammer slash book blogger. So I just borrow it from her collection and then I return it to her so thanks Lace. But that's why I will have to use images for this video. First book that I want to talk about is Regretting You by Colleen Hoover and Colleen Hoover is one of my all-time favorite authors. I love and have read every single one of her books but Regretting You follows two main characters who are Morgan Grant and her 16 year old daughter Clara Grant and it kind of goes through their relationship with each other. In the beginning of the book Morgan's husband and Clara's dad dies in a car accident. Their dad slash husband was the glue that kind of held them together. Morgan and Clara's relationship was never really amazing. There's this boy that comes in Clara's life. There's a boy that comes into Morgan's life from her past. And there's also, there's like some mystery involved because the car accident seems a little fishy. Morgan's like, don't make the same mistakes I did. She was pregnant with Clara, I think in high school or before college or something like that. And so she doesn't want Clara to get pregnant and everything. I rated this three stars because the characters were a little annoying, just a smidge, but also three stars means that it's still a good book. It's just not like amazing. So I would recommend it still just because it's Colleen Hoover and I love her books. The next book that I read is Things You Saved in a Fire by Catherine Center. And this is actually a book that my cousin Lacey recommended that I read because it's one of her favorites. And it's a really great empowering book in my opinion. It features a female main character um, whose name is Cassie Hanwell and she is a firefighter. She is based in Austin, Texas. She's killing the game at her fire station. She's like about to get promoted and everything. She's like getting an award and she's just crushing it. But then her mom calls and tells her like, hey, do you want to like come live with me for a year and her mom lives in Boston. Cassie's kind of like conflicted because her and her mom have never really had that great a relationship or they did have a good relationship and then her mom left her and her dad at when she was 16 and her parents got a divorce and everything and she was kind of like, I don't really want to talk to you anymore. She ends up doing it. When she transferred to the Boston firehouse, it's like totally different from her Austin firehouse because it's a lot more old school like her Austin house was firehouse was very like liberal and progressive I guess everyone was very open to having like a female firefighter the new firehouse is very very like male and very old school like women can't be firefighters and all that stuff and the book goes through her progress there and like how she overcomes biases and stereotypes and just like sexist things and of course there's some romance in there so it's her and a rookie that gets recruited kind of at the same time or like transfers at the same time to that fire station firehouse and you know stuff happens I do appreciate though that it's not super romantically focused 
um, not super romance focused, which is nice. I definitely cried my eyes out and would highly recommend this book. I gave it five stars. So the third book that I read was Frankly in Love by David Yoon and I have been wanting to read this book for the longest time. If you guys have a physical copy or have ever seen it, it is beautiful, but it features an Asian male character, main character, which honestly is pretty rare. It's pretty rare to have like BIPOC main characters in the first place. So I was very excited to read it. Um, the main character's name is Frank Lee. He is a high school senior. And the whole book kind of centers around this idea of, um, or this internal struggle, maybe even external struggle that a lot of Asian American kids have about dating. And honestly, I related to this hardcore. He really likes this one girl, but she is white and his parents have always wanted him to marry a Korean a Korean girl and so he like doesn't know what to do because he really likes this white girl but he knows that his parents won't approve and then he has another friend named Joy Song who is in the same predicament she is dating I believe a Cor not Korean she's like dating a Chinese boy and her parents don't approve so then Joy and Frank are like yo let's pretend date but at the same time, we're like secretly dating like who we actually want to date. It goes through their whole journey with that and all of the other kind of struggles that come with being in high school. Um, since they are high school seniors, it's also like college decisions, SATs, ACTs, more specifically Frank's relationship with his parents and his family, and like his sister and stuff. And it's just a really wholesome book that I really enjoyed. It's definitely very like young adult fiction romance. I gave it four stars because it was very cute um, and I did really enjoy reading it. It was just very high school and I think it's because it's been so long since I read high school books or like books that were set in high school and I forgot how they were written. So. Okay, fourth book, let's go. Fourth book that I read is The Way You Make Me Feel by Maureen Gu. I gave this book three stars. It features Clara Shin, who is a Korean American, um, and her, she like loves pranks. She's a prankster. She loves jokes and she's like the class clown. Um, basically, honestly, I, gave this book three stars because Clara annoyed the heck out of me. She's basically that person in class that will like say something random to disrupt a class or like an assembly she's like that person that has to make some snide comment. So I personally was very annoyed with her and her character which is hard because she's literally the main character. She gets in trouble at school no surprise and so her dad has her work at his food truck for the summer and she has to work with this girl that she doesn't really get along with who is rose i will say that at the end of the book i was not as thoroughly annoyed of clara as i was at the beginning so there was definitely a lot of character development fifth book daisy jones and the six by taylor jennings reed y'all this book is one of my absolute favorites now. I give it five stars because it is so freaking good. You guys have to read it, okay? It's about Daisy Jones and The Six. I, for a long time, like before I started reading this, thought this was a non-fiction, like a memoir of some sort, but it is fiction. So it's about Daisy Jones, who is a singer, and she has like a beautiful, beautiful voice. She's amazing, incredible. And then The Six is a band who the main singer is Billy Dunn. The way it's written is almost kind of like a podcast format um, or kind of like interviewee kind of format, which I thought I would not enjoy, but I actually made it very, very easy to read and very entertaining. And it follows their, both of their careers. They end up merging for a little bit and then one night july 12th 1979 was their final concert at chicago stadium and after that night they broke up like out of the blue the band broke up no one knows what happens and this book is interviewing them and to, just to reveal and figure out what happens i just really really enjoyed it it was so freaking good um the ending is incredible and just please read it if you take anything away from this 
just read it because I think you will thoroughly enjoy it. Next book, oh my gosh, this one is also amazing. Book number six, Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This book follows two main characters. One is Alex Chamberlain, who is a white blogger, and the other one is Amira, who is a black woman. Amira is Alex's babysitter. Something happens in Alex's house, so they like had to call the cops, and so Alex just called Amira to come take her daughter away and like walk around because like she didn't want her daughter to see all the cops and like get scared and stuff. So Amira comes and they go to like a local supermarket kind of store to like just walk around, just keep the daughter company. I think another customer reports her and says like that's not her daughter, like what is she doing with a kid out here at like 11 p.m. like just, you know whatever. And so Amira's like no I'm her babysitter and things start escalating very quickly like the security guard comes over is like asking for her id no one believes her that she is the girl's babysitter because she's black and the girl is white and it's very frustrating um and very scary and then she ends up you know de-escalating the situation and everything but yes so that's kind of the start of the book and then it goes into Alex's actions on like everything that happens afterwards like Alex is trying to make her make it up to Amira she's like doing all these things and like Amira is trying to live her life and trying to get past it and then their lives kind of merge and things happen and it's a really interesting book about racism and white privilege and how white people react to things like this. So I ended up giving it five stars. It was a very, very good book. Like I said, it covers systemic racism, racism, and pri white privilege really well. So I would highly recommend. And the next book that I read is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Oh my gosh. This book was also a whirlwind. It covers two main characters and their families and their lives. A white woman named Elena Richardson and the second is a black woman Mia Warren and it takes place in Shaker Heights which is a suburb in Cleveland and it is a very pristine typical suburb where you know you have to keep your lawn mowed you have to make sure that you like comply with the city in terms of your house colors and it's just very like picture perfect Elena rents out one of her apartments to Mia Warren who is an artist and a single mother she has a mysterious past and a disregard for the status quo a family friend of the Richardsons decides to adopt this Chinese little Chinese American baby that was left on like the firehouse stoop and so they ended up adopting her but then that sparks like this whole custody battle because the mom is actually one of Mia's friends it really dives into like class differences and racial differences that's the main premise of it and it dives into yeah like I said like social economic class and like disparity and inequality and also racism and just all of those issues and more. So the next book I read was Know My Name by Chanel Miller and just a trigger warning that I will be talking about like sexual assault and rape in the following section but if you guys don't know who Chanel Miller is she is the girl that was raped by Brock Turner and Brock Turner literally got like six months of jail time which is insane and so just I can't I just like still can't believe it but this book Chanel talks about what happened what happens after what happened with the trial and just everything that came with it and it was just such a heart-wrenching book to read and to read about her experience and everything and I think it shines such it just shines such a light on how messed up our justice system is and the process of everything, what happens to rape victims, and how, yeah, just like how our society and our system always makes it harder for the victim than for the person that actually did the wrong doing. So that was really interesting 
to reflect on. I would definitely recommend reading it if you are interested. So I read the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. Jimenez, and it is about this main character, Sloane Monroe. She's driving, driving down the road. And then I think like her sunroof is open or something and like a dog jumps in. He, a dog's like running across the street and then like jumps into her car or something like that. She's like trying to find the owner. She like brings the dog back to her apartment. She locates the owner. It's this dude who's like in Australia. He like doesn't reply to her after like weeks. So he finally texts her back. He wants the dog back but she's like, okay you literally did not contact me for two weeks. You're gonna have to fight for him because I don't want to give you your dog back. So they like FaceTime, they like talk and everything. And Jason is a singer. He comes back to the US and they try to figure out what happens. So, all right, book number 10 is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. Okay, I know I am late to the train. My cousin recommended me to read this like way back in high school and for some reason I just never picked it up. Also, my mistake, I thought this was the first series of Cassandra Clare but apparently it's actually City of Bones so I'm now reading City of Bones. It's so good if you have not read it yet I would highly recommend picking it up. So the year is 1878, it's set in London, it follows this female main character Tessa Gray. She is from New York and so she goes to London to find her brother Nate who moved there um, a couple years before and he just like told her hey you should come visit me in London. So she goes to London, she ends up getting kidnapped by this club called the Pandemonium Club. It's the secret organization of vampires, demons, warlocks, and humans. She finds out that she has like some sort of like shapeshifter ability that she never knew she had. She soon discovers that her only allies are the demon slaying shadow hunters, including Will and Jim, the mysterious boys she is attracted to. She's trying to figure out where her brother is and what she is and why people tried to kidnap her. And then like Will and Jem are these two boys that she meets who are shadow hunters and shadow hunters are basically like the police, I guess, of the underworld. The next book I read was, of course, Clockwork Prince, which is the second book of this series. I'm probably not going to review this book and the third book that in depth because I don't want to spoil anything. A lot of stuff happens, you know, Tessa learns more about her abilities and who she is. I don't think she finds out who she actually is yet. Okay, I forgot to mention this from the first book, but Will and Jem. Let's talk about them. Jem is this sweet, sweet boy who is like the kindest soul ever. And Will is this beautiful human, not human, shadow hunter, who's also great and amazing, but he's like a jerk and super mean to Tessa. And when I first was reading the first book, I was like, I literally texted my cousin and was like, I know already that I'm gonna love him at the end of this series because that's what always happens. They are best friends, basically brothers. Will is kind of nice to Tessa and he's like not sure why. He's like there's something about her that I kind of really like. And then Jem also likes Tessa and Tessa is in the middle and kind of like, I really like Will but like he's kind of a jerk. And like Jem's just like really nice but like, I don't know. And then in the second book, a lot of, a lot of stuff happens and develops. And then the third book is Clockwork Princess. Oh my god. I like don't think I'm recovered yet from this book. A, I have never cried harder in a book than Clockwork Princess, which is saying something because I legit cry in every single book that I read. The sobs that I had when reading this book were like heaving sobs and it was all in like the last fourth of the book too. Like literally in the epilogue I was sobbing so. Have you ever cried during an epilogue? I don't know. I will also say that this book is so well written. There are like five bajillion plot twists. I've, I've gasped like every other chapter. There are so many plot twists that happen that you just don't expect and then it happens and you're like, what the hell? Cassandra Clare writes in this way where it's not overwhelming at all. The plot twists and everything don't feel rushed or random. It just all just flows 
super, super well. Yo, the ending, I was just sobbing. If you were looking to get lost in a different world, pick up The Infernal Devices. Book number 13 is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. It follows two main characters. One is a black female, Alexa Monroe. The second is a white male, Drew Nichols. It starts off with them getting stuck on the elevator together in San Francisco, and it ends with Drew inviting Alexa to be his wedding date for the wedding he's gonna go to that weekend and it's the wedding of his best friend and his ex-girlfriend and Alexa's kind of like sure YOLO why not I don't usually do this but why not because a spark was there. Drew is based in LA and Alexa's based in SF so she was like it's probably just gonna be a weekend thing and like whatever I'm just gonna be this guy's wedding date. There's a very clear spark and connection between them. Drew's like, I'm a no commitments guy. Like, I just don't do that. They part ways and they really miss each other. He's like, hey, do you want to fly down to LA next weekend? And she's like, okay, sure. So, so she flies out to LA. They're like so cute together and they go on dates and they like hang out the weekend and then she leaves to SF. I ended up giving it four stars. Loved Alexa. She was such an empowering main character. Drew was so annoying. I thought it was a really cute book and it also dives into interracial relationships and everything that comes with that. I also cried in this book, so. Book number 14 is We Met in December by Rosie Curtis and this one takes place in London. It follows Jess who's 29, and then a guy named Alex. Jess leaves her little town that she grew up in for a new job, and she's like, I'm 29, but I'm living my life, and you know what? I'm working in an industry and at a company that I've always wanted to work in, so whatever. And Alex is was a lawyer and quit his job and was like, I'm gonna be a nurse because I wanna help people. And then they meet and then she leaves for a ski trip for two weeks and then she comes back and when they meet there's like she like felt a connection when she comes back from her ski trip though one of their other flatmates emma came out of alex's room so jess was like they clearly slept together jess and alex kind of form this friendship together and they're basically best friends um she secretly is like in love with him and then you know just follows their life in that year and their relationship. It was like a cute story, but it was kind of slow for me and just kind of boring. All right, book number 15, we finally made it. This is the most recent book that I finished during quarantine, and that is So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Aluo. And if this is not on your reading list, or if you have not read it yet, I would highly recommend it. I have been trying to focus on anti-racism resources and really building up that knowledge and everything. And I think it's so important to really educate ourselves and this book is amazing. I think that Ijoma has such a brilliant way of writing where it's both narrative and interesting to read and holds your attention while at the same time being super super educational and dense. And it's really really easy to read anyone can read it it's very straightforward and all the chapters focus on a certain part of racism and what comes with racism so there's a chapter about the school to prison pipeline microaggressions the model minority myth white privilege slash what is privilege what happens if someone calls me a racist like what do i do now so many more i think there's like 18 chapters I want to say or 19. I've learned so much just reading that book. I highlighted so much. I think it really opens up your eyes to things that maybe you did not notice or realize. And a metaphor that Ijeoma talks about is how we are all in this system and we're all cogs in this machine and even if you are passive and you're like I'm not a racist, if you are just living your life you are passively this cog in this machine of racism and systemic racism and injustice. And so we have to actively be anti-racist and try and change 
what is happening and actively do things to be anti-racist because otherwise like just by passively living we are helping the system that we should be dismantling so would highly recommend this book five stars and put it on the top of your reading list oh my gosh you guys we freaking made it i'm apologize for how long this video is but i hope it was enjoyable i feel like i babbled so much and rambled a ton you know what this is the first installment and i'm hopeful that the future ones will not be as long because also i will probably not be covering 15 books but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up don't forget to comment down below what your favorite book is and if you have any recommendations and to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell because i have a new video every single sunday and i would love to see your beautiful face back here next week feel free to follow me on instagram at classified closet if you would like and i will talk to you guys next time bye